वेलकम टू दिस कोर्स ऑन सर्विस मार्केटिंग इंटीग्रेटिंग पीपल टेक्नोलॉजी एंड स्ट्रेटजी एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दैट दिस कोर्स इज डिवाइडेड इन फाइव सेक्शंस इन द फर्स्ट सेक्शन वी हैव स्टार्टेड टॉकिंग अबाउट अंडरस्टैंडिंग सर्विस प्रोडक्ट्स कंज्यूमर्स एंड मार्केट्स दिस सेक्शन इज डिवाइडेड इन इन टू सेवन मॉड्यूल्स एंड द फर्स्ट थ्री मॉड्यूल्स आर डेडिकेटेड टू न्यू परस्पेक्टिव ऑन मार्केटिंग इन द सर्विस इकॉनमी वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट मॉड्यूल वन एंड टू and now we will talk about the module 3 and in module 3 we will talk about things like first to understand the component of the traditional marketing mix as applied to services second is to describe the components of the extended marketing mix for managing the customer interface the third is appreciate that the mar- marketing operations and human resource management functions need to be closely integrated for service businesses fourth is to understand the implications of the service profit chain for service management and the fifth is know the framework for developing effective service marketing strategies so let us start with the seven p's of services marketing we have as all of us are uh, well aware that there are four traditional p's of marketing that is product price place or distribution and promotion or uh, communication in services marketing this marketing mix is extended to include three more p's so it makes uh, seven p's of services marketing the three more p's are the three additional p's are process physical environment and people so so th- these are the seven p's of services marketing now let us look at the place and time so service distribution may take place through physical or electronic channels or both of them depending upon the nature of the service banks offer a wide range of distribution channels including visiting a bank branch using a network of atms online banking on desktop and using apps on your smartphone etc for the same so you see that for the same kind of services banks are offering different channels to the customers in particular many information based services can be delivered almost instantaneously to any location in the world that has internet access so the only thing that is required for delivery of service is the internet access next important thing that we should be looking at is the distribution of core versus supplementary services so internet is reshaping distribution strategy for numerous industries but we need to distinguish between its potential for delivering information based core products those that respond to customers primary requirements and simply providing supplementary services that facilitate it purchase and use of physical goods so there are two uh, things that uh, worry us one is the information based core product so those products that respond to customer primary requirements and then the second is the supplementary services that facilitate purchase and use of these physical goods example of information based core products include online education programs offered by nptel in contrast if you book a flight online the delivery of the core product itself must take place through physical channels and you will have to go to the airport in person to board your flight another important component of this traditional marketing mix as applied to services is the importance of the time factor speed and convenience of place and time have become important determinant of effective distribution and delivery of services Many services are delivered in real time while customer are physically present. Today customers are highly time sensitive mostly in a hurry and see wasted time as a cost which should be avoided. Increasingly busy customer expect service to be available when it suits them. So when they want then the service should be made available to them rather than when it suits the supplier. earlier version is that when the supplier wanted then uh, he used to supply services but now it is the other way around customer expect the service to be delivered when they uh, they are free when they want it so if one firm responds by ex- by offering extended hours its competitors often feel obliged to to follow suit because all the customers will shift to the earlier company which is offering extended hours so nowadays a growing number of services are available 24 by 7 and via many more delivery channels the third import the, uh, the next important component here is that of promotion and education few marketing programs can succeed without effective communication so this component plays three vital role so this promotion and education this this plays three vital role the first is to provide 
needed information and advice, persuade target customers to buy the service products and encourage them to take action at specific times. In services marketing, much of the communication is educational in nature especially for new customers because these new customers are to be educated. So, this communication takes place, uh, this communication is more of educational in nature. Suppliers need to teach their customers about the benefits of the service, where and when to obtain the service and how to participate in service process to get the be best results. So, now what uh, suppliers have to teach customers is where and when to obtain the service, how to participate in that service so that the customers can get the best results from that service. Now, the, uh, the next problem is that services are often difficult to visualize and understand as intangible, ten, intangible elements tend to dominate value creation. So, now you keep in mind that the problem with services is that they are dominated by intangible elements and that is why it becomes difficult for, the, for customers to visualize the service. So, intangibility can boost, can, can consist of both mental and physical dimension. Now, what is this mental and physical dimension? The mental intangibility means that it is difficult for customers to visualize the experience in advance of purchase and to understand the value and benefit that they will be getting. So, the customers have to first purchase the service and then experience the service to understand what will be the, what will be the benefits of this service. Another is physical intangibility which is that which cannot be touched or experienced by other senses. So, these are the two types of intangibility that we are talking about mental and physical. Intangible elements are such as processes, internet based transactions and expertise and attitude of service personnel. These often create the most value in the service performance. Therefore, an important role of the service firm's communication is to create confidence in the firm's experience, credentials and expertise of its employees. Now, you see that there are some intangible elements which are very important for, customer, for customers. For example, the processes of service delivery, then there are internet based transactions, expertise and attitude of service personnel. So, firms can use physical images and metaphors to promote service benefits and demonstrate the firm's competence in these four uh, areas, in, uh, in these four intangible elements. Then there is always a customer customer interaction that affect the service experience because there may be more than one customer uh, present uh, at the time of service delivery. So, that customer customer interaction they, it also affects the service experience. So, other customers at the service facility too can affect uh, your satisfaction as a customer. How they are dressed, who they are and how they behave. So, this can reinforce or negate the image of the firm is trying to project and the experience it is trying to create. So, the firm is trying to create certain kind of image and experience, but because there are other customers uh, well, uh, around in the facility where the service is being delivered and how they are dressed, who they are and how they behave. So, that can affect the, uh, the experience of, of all the customers. Marketing communication needs to be careful to attract the right segment to the service facility and once there it needs to educate them on the proper behavior. So, the first important thing here is to attract the right kind of segment and then to educate those customers for proper behavior so that the experience of everyone is fulfilling. Another issue here, uh, the next issue here is that of the process. Creating and delivering product elements requires design and implementation of effective processes and processes are, are, are the sequence of steps uh, taken to deliver a service. So, badly designed service process can lead to slow, bureaucratic and ineffective service delivery. Wasted time, wasted time for the employees, del service delivery employees as well as the customers, a disappointing experience for, for, for all the customers, low productivity 
uh, uh, with respect to the service delivery employee and uh, employees and increased likelihood of a service failure. So, when the service processes are not properly designed, then there are lots of problems and this may lead to service failure. Operational input and output can vary widely, vary more widely for services and can make customer service process management a challenge. So, in services, the input and output can uh, vary. So, best firms reduce variability by carefully designing customer service process. So, each process is well defined, each activity to, com to complete a process is well defined so that this variability comes down. Adopting standardized procedures and using technology or equipment. Training employees to be more careful and deliver the same kind of service to everyone and automate tasks previously performed by humans. So, the humans are being replaced by technology or equipment so that the service, uh, 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 service become standardized. Now, customers are also often uh, involved in co-production of the service. Some services require customers to participate actively in co-producing the service product. For example, you are expected to help the investment banker understand what your needs are, how much you how much you want to invest financially and the kind of risk you are willing to take. So, the customers have to give all this kind of uh, uh, information to the investment banker and only then the investment banker will be able to make a proper uh, uh, investment strategy for that customer. So, this will enable the banker to advise you on what to invest in, when to invest and what may be the best, best invest, investment options available to you. In fact, service scholars argue that customers often function as partial employees. So, partial employees means some, uh, doing some activities that the, uh, the company's employees are supposed to do. So, in services, is, uh, customers are, of, uh, are often doing several functions that an employee does. So, therefore, they are also termed as partial employees. Yet another problem with services is that of balancing the demand and capacity. Manufacturing firms can ensure a smooth process flow by having an inventory of material and parts ready for use. So, in manufacturing lots of inventory can be maintained of the, of the raw material and semi finished goods and parts. But in services, such buffering means having customer wait in service process. So, the, the basic problem is to make the customer wait, wait, wait and because customers are running short on time, they may not like to wait. So, balancing of demand and capacity, design of a waiting and queuing system and management of the impact of waiting on customer psychology. Then important concept is that of the physical environment. Physical environment, it is also called as service escape. It plays an important role where customers are required to enter the service factory. So, now service customers, customers buying services, they enter a service factory. So, now obviously, the surrounding the physical environment or the service scape becomes important. Appearance of a building, landscaping, interior furnishings, equipment, staff, members uniforms, signs, printed materials and other visible cues provide tangible evidence of a firm's service quality. So, this firm's service quality is, is made tangible by way of these things which are called as the physical environment or the service scape which is a place where service is delivered where the employees and the customers they come together and they interact. So, the service scape also facilitates service delivery and guides customer through the service process. Now, this have a profound impact on customer satisfaction and service productivity. So, it will affect the, cus the customers as well as the employees. It will affect the satisfaction of the customer and the productivity of the employee. So, uh, this is uh, this makes service uh, physical environment and service scape uh, 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 an important element of uh, uh, extended marketing mix for services. Another problem area in services is that of people. Service firms need to devote a special care in selecting, training and motiv motivating their service employees. 
The difference between one service supplier and another often lies in the attitude and skill of the employees. So now one company has one group of, uh, of employees, another, group, uh, another company has another group of em employees. What differentiate these two companies is the attitude and skill of their employees. In addition to possessing the technical skills, individuals also need good interpersonal skills and positive attitude. So, we are not only talking about the technical skills that is required for delivery of the service, but also good interpersonal skills and the positive attitude of the, of the service personnel. Loyal Skilled and motivated employees represent a key competitive advantage. So, these are the three sources of key competitive advantage in services, loyal, skilled and motivated employees. So, you may have, you may have or you may not have all those kind of equipment and technology, but if you have loyal, skilled and motivated employees, then you can have a, a competitive advantage. Now, look at this picture. Hospitality is shown through employees wearing a ready smile and being ready to serve customers. So, that will distinguish one company for, from another and this will be a source of competitive advantage for this company. Now, let us look at the integration of marketing with other management functions. So, we are talking of integration of marketing with human resources management with operations management. And all these ma management functions, they are then interrelated, uh, they are then uh, integrated and in between is the customer. So, customer gets a holistic picture of the, of the company and not individualistic picture. So, these function must collaborate to, so, uh, to serve the customers, they for, uh, for a great kind of customer satisfaction, integration of, the, of, of all these functions is necessary. So, marketers working in a service business cannot expect to operate successfully in isolation from managers and other functions. In products, it may be possible that managers working, uh, working in different functions may be working in isolation, but in service businesses, marketers and uh, operation managers and uh, human resource managers, they have to work uh, in close collaboration with each other. In fact, four management functions play central and interrelated roles in meeting the needs of service customers. So, these are the three, uh, these are the four management functions, they have to come together to, uh, to, uh, to meet the need of the service customers. So, marketing operations, HR and IT, they will be integrated in order to satisfy the customer needs. So, top management should ensure that each of these functions do not operate in departmental silos and they should and they are working in a, as, as a team in a whole rather than, uh, 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 rather than in silos. So, operations is the primary line function in a service business responsible for managing service delivery through equipment, facilities, systems and many tasks performed by customer contact employees. Operation managers are actively involved in the product and process design, many aspects of the physical environment and implementation of productivity and quality improvements, improvement programs. Human resource manager is responsible for job definition, recruitment, training, reward, systems, the quality of work life, all of which are central to the people element. So, uh, you see now HR is so, so important in services because they look after the service uh, employees and these service employees, they deliver the service to the customer. So, service organization cannot afford to have HR specialist who do not understand customers. So, all those kind of training and reward system etcetera has to be, has to, has to go backward from what customer wants and what are their needs and, and how their needs are to be satisfied. And then these kind of reward systems and training programs etcetera and, and uh, recruitment policies etcetera have to be then defined accordingly. Marketing and operation activities are easier to manage and are more likely to be successful when employees have the skills and training needed to succeed in their jobs and recognize the importance of creating and maintaining customer satisfaction. So, if the employees are well trained and have the right kind of attitude, 
then the job of the marketing and operations becomes much more easier. IT is a key function as service process are information heavy. At almost every customer touch point, real time information is, is needed. So, that is what makes IT, although it is a back end function, but it becomes very important. Operations, HR and marketing are critically dependent on IT to manage their functions and create value for the organization's customer. So, when IT manage the ma uh, help in managing the operations HR and marketing, then it creates value for the organization's customers. As a service manager, you need to be concerned about satisfying your customer on a daily basis. Every time you need to, uh, you need to be concerned about satisfying your customers. The operational systems running is smoothly and efficient, efficiently, only then you will be, a, you will be in a position to satisfy the customers. Employee, employees are not only working productively, but also delivering good service. So, it is not only about productivity, serving X number of customers in an hour. So, that is not the only important, important criteria in services, it is, also deliver, it is also about delivering good service, so that the customers become satisfied. Problem in any one of these areas can negatively affect the execution of tasks in the other functions and may result in dissatisfied customers. So, if all the systems and processes are not function, functioning in an in integrated manner, so that may result in the, the dissatisfied customers. In short, integration of activities between these functions is the name of the game in services. So, that is why we started with the title that integration of uh, uh, services, integration of a strategy, employees and IT. So, we started with that. So, this integration is, uh, is the name of the game. Now, look at the service profit chain. So, there are some internal factors and there are some, uh, some external considerations. Internal means operating strategy and service delivery systems. Operating strategy and service delivery systems. So, we st start with product and out output quality th that leads to loyalty, satisfaction, capability and service quality that is on the employees. Then it creates service value. Now, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, is then uh, tra uh, transferred to the target market. So, the, your customers become more satisfaction, satisfied and more loyal. And obviously, when customers are, are, are loyal, they will, they, uh, they will give you more profitability and more revenue growth. So, we are talking about the internal processes that is the operating strategy and service delivery systems like workplace place design, job design and decision making, latitude, selection and development, rewards and recognition, information and communication and adequate tools to serve customers. Service concept means quality and productivity improvements yield higher service quality and lower cost. So, this is what this service con concept related to service value is that it leads to quality and productivity improvements and higher service quality at a lower cost at the same time. Now, satisfaction and loyalty to the customers, attractive value, service designed and delivered to meet target customers needs and loyalty can be then translated into lifetime value. Loyal customers may have a higher lifetime value, retention of customers becomes easier, they will come with repeat businesses and they will refer your company to other, uh, 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 to other customers and that will lead to revenue growth in the long term and profitability in the short term. So, it, 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 the service profit chain works in this manner that customer loyalty drives profitability and growth, customer satisfaction drives co uh, customer loyalty and value derives customer satisfaction. And what derives value is the quality and productivity. Employee loyalty drives service quality and productivity. And, and from how does employee loyalty comes? Satisfied employee drive employee loyalty. Internal quality as delivered by operations and IT derives, drives employee satisfaction and top management leadership underlies the success chain. So, all this chain uh, all this chain will become a profit chain when the top management leadership 
is driving this profit chain. So, these are the links in the service profit chain. Let us look at the framework for developing effective service marketing strategies. So, the first is to understand service products, consumers and markets, applying the four P's of marketing to services, designing and managing the customer interface, the additional three P's of services marketing. For, so, therefore, for designing and managing of this customer interface, meeting the customers, delivering the service to the customers. So, for this, for this the important thing is the additional three P's of service marketing. Then developing customer relationships and striving for service excellence. To conclude, in this module we have started with the components of the traditional place and promotion and extended mar marketing mix as applied to services. Next we moved, moved on and emphasized on how integrating, vari integrating various functional areas can help in catering to the needs of service customers in a better way. Then we learnt about the concept of service profit chain. Finally, we touched upon how to develop effective services marketing strategies. These are the books from where the material for these, uh, this module uh, has been taken. Thank you.